In an industry that is often dominated by men, it can be harder for women to stand out and become true top-tier superstars. Tamara Lynn Sitch, using the name Sunny, broke the mold in the 90s by becoming one of the biggest names in the wrestling world. As the cute girl-next-door type with undeniable sex appeal, Sunny quickly rose to the top and for a time was a pivotal weapon for WWE to use in the Monday Night Wars. But the fall from grace was just as harsh and sudden as the rise for 1996's most downloaded celebrity. A questionable attitude and substance abuse issues helped Sitch burn her bridge in the business, rendering her a sad afterthought only a couple of years after she had been at her dizzying peak. Worse still, Tammy's life after fame accelerated her downward spiral, the first diva of wrestling hitting some tragic lows that saw her land in and out of trouble with the law and had people fearing that Sonny could be the next wrestling tragedy. Tammy Sitch grew up as a fan of the business, attending house shows with her mother during her formative years and collecting the action figures and autographs of her favourite performers. She also took pictures, some of which found their way into the wrestling magazines that she also collected. At an independent show she went to whilst in high school, Sitch met and promptly fell in love with Chris Candido, whom she soon began travelling with and accompanying to shows, including for the Memphis-based USWA and for Jim Cornette's fledgling Kentucky-based territory Smoky mountain wrestling. This was all while Tammy was in college and she ended up abandoning her studies in order to get into the business herself, signing a six-month deal to work for Cornette as heel manager Tamara Fitch. Her run there was successful as she was a fixture on SMW's television and counted the group's heavyweight champion Brian Lee as one of her clients. Her work caught the attention of Vince McMahon and WWE, who signed Sitch and Candido at the end of 1994. Sitch would first debut as on-air personality Tamara Murphy and appear on live event news segments during WWE's syndicated programs before being rechristened Sunny and partnered with Candido, who was now known as Skip. Soon, the body donners added Dr. Tom Pritchard, aka Zip, to their ranks and were off to the races as the annoying powder blue clad fitness fanatics. Sonny was in their corner when they won the tag team titles at WrestleMania 12 and, all things considered, the group had a fair run in the midcard during a time where WWE interest was waning in the face of fierce competition from WCW. Little did Tammy know that after emancipating from the Body Donners and having a couple of spells with the Smoking Guns and Godwins and following a short forgettable spell managing Farouk, that she would be one of the main reasons viewers, most of them young and male, would tune into Raw and pack arenas in the tens of thousands as the Attitude Era ushered in a new boom period. Or perhaps Tammy did know that she would be one of the main reasons for this. Some, like Tom Pritchard and Chris Candido's brother Johnny, contend that Sitch had long had a high opinion of herself, the result of growing up around people constantly telling her how pretty she was. Her time in WWE had not been without controversy, as she rubbed many up the wrong way backstage due to her attitude. She had feuded behind the scenes with fellow females who threatened her position, like Sable and Terry Runnels, and turned off a lot of the boys by carrying on a blatant affair with Shawn Michaels, himself hardly everyone's best friend, right in the face of Candido. Sitch had also developed an issue with alcohol and muscle relaxers, namely Somers, as her popularity soared. So, while she was ratings gold, Tammy could, so they say, be a bit of a handful in the locker room and things got to the point that WWE offered her an ultimatum in June of 1998. Either seek professional help for her substance abuse problems or face the sack. After refusing to comply with their wishes, WWE terminated her contract, which had been due to run until late 2001 on July 31st. Interestingly, Sitch only found out about her release on her way back from ECW's Heatwave pay-per-view, which took place on August 2nd. On that show, a notably disheveled Sitch accompanied Candido, who had made ECW his home base since leaving WWE in late 96, for his victory over Lance Storm. WWE allowed Tammy to work for other companies immediately after her release, providing she didn't use the sunny name. ECW head honcho Paul Heyman was more than happy to have her, and she began working for the company full-time as a talent, while also helping with event promotion. 
The environment change, sadly, did sitch no favors when it came to her substance abuse issues, and it was while working for ECW that her legal troubles began. On February 4th, 1999, Sitch was arrested at her mother's home in Matawan, New Jersey, for violating a restraining order that had been put in place to keep her off the property. She wasn't released until late the following day, and though it might seem like a minor episode compared with some of her later exploits, it was the beginning of a bad year for both her and Candido as their drug-induced self-destruction played out in public. The two were suspended by ECW without pay, though they would be brought back a few months later. In Sitch's case, Heyman knew she was crucial to the company pulling in decent ratings for their new show on TNN, and on October 8th, dedicated most of an episode to her, a gaudy mix of WWE-sanctioned bikini footage and an emotional interview where Sitch openly discussed her personal struggles. On October 23rd, just two weeks after that episode aired, Sitch was found unconscious backstage at an ECW TV taping. The then 26-year-old claimed that she had taken a sip of someone else's non-alcoholic drink in the locker room and that the bottle may have been laced with GHB, a popular designer drug with wrestlers of the era as it helped burn fat. Sitch took a drug test administered by the court of New Jersey a couple of days later and passed, but it felt as though wherever Sitch went, drama soon followed, and she and Candy were both fired by ECW in December following a particularly bad show where they were said to be uncontrollable. Things didn't get too much better during a short but sad stay in WCW either. That came to an end after someone found some syringes and bottles of painkilling drug Newbane in the women's locker room and blamed Sitch for it. She denied taking it and took a drug test when asked, but WCW lost the results. When it showed up weeks later and was clean, Tammy yelled at Eric Bischoff about it and he promptly gave her the boot. And that was really the end of Sitch's mainstream pro wrestling career. With both ECW and WCW soon going out of business, her and Candido tried to make a living for themselves on the independent scene and in Japan and Puerto Rico, but their substance abuse issues persisted. In August of 2001, police were called to the scene of a shoot for the wrestling's Vixen site, which was set up by Missy Hyatt and featured Missy, Sitch, and other women of wrestling posing for explicit pictures after Candido had lost his rag. Not too long after, Sitch decided to quit the business when she became tired of getting heckled by fans at shows. Happily, her and Candido both seemed to get their act together in the years that followed, kicking the drugs and living a somewhat normal life, at least for a while. Sitch got back into shape and opened a tanning salon near their home while Candido got a regular gig with TNA and was impressing everyone with his conduct and work now that he was clean and sober. Then, tragically, on April 25th, 2005, Candido died, aged just 33. His passing was not due to drugs, but acute pneumonia. Candido had broken his leg in a freak accident at the TNA lockdown pay-per-view just days prior, flew home, and promptly fell ill. His death was a huge blow to Sitch, who through thick and thin and numerous infidelities had been by his side for 16 years. Rather than totally fly off the rails, Tammy actually steadied the ship and managed to keep her name out of the headlines. By 2007, she was apparently back in college studying medical technology and was in a relationship with a New York policeman. She got herself into sunny shape and resurfaced on WWE television on the 15th anniversary edition of Raw, then came back again for a blink and you'll miss it appearance as one of the 25 divas in a battle royal at WrestleMania 25. Around this time period, she continued making appearances at conventions and autograph signings, did shoot interviews, and even worked for Ring of Honor. Then, in 2011, Sonny was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Clearly, the perception was that she had turned her life around and was no longer the Hellraiser who had caused so many headaches years before. Regrettably, though, it was in 2011 that Sitch started to crack. After breaking up with her cop boyfriend, the rumors of drug and alcohol abuse began to surface. It was hardly a shock then when she checked herself into rehab at WWE's expense as part of their talent wellness policy in July 2012. It was not her first time taking advantage of WWE's offer. Mere weeks after getting out of the treatment facility, Tammy was arrested. Not once, 
not twice, but three times over the course of three consecutive days. Sitch, then 39, was first arrested on September 11th at 8.55pm. Police were called to the scene after an incident between the Hall of Famer and her boyfriend at the time, independent wrestler Damian Darling, who predominantly worked in the New York and New Jersey areas but had a regular 9-to-5 gig when he wasn't playing Weekend Warrior. According to reports, Darling and Sitch got into an argument about Sitch relapsing shortly after getting out of rehab. Sitch then became angry and went to attack Darling, which is when police were called. She was arrested and released on a $500 bond, while Darling also got a restraining order against her. Not to be deterred, Sitch showed back up at the house around 5pm the next day and allegedly tried to choke Darling out with a UFC-type move. She was once again arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, attempted strangulation, and violating a restraining order. This time, she was released on the significantly higher bond of $25. $5,000. And wouldn't you know it, she went back to the house again the following day, was arrested again, and was charged again with violating a restraining order and released on a $2,500 bond. Following the arraignment, Sitch's sister told the court that she was being taken directly to a rehabilitation facility in New Jersey. But that wasn't strictly true, as Tammy posted on her Facebook page in the days after her third arrest, writing, Cheat on a good woman, you get choked out, before imploring friends, fans, and followers to respect her and Damien's privacy as they work through this unfortunate turn of events. On October 8th, Sitch was arrested once again after she entered Darling's home in Brantford, Connecticut. He had come home to find her passed out on the couch with an empty bottle of vodka on the table next to her. At one point, according to Darling, she had locked herself in the bathroom and was yelling and screaming before kicking down the door. Police got there in the evening and, according to their report, found Sitch asleep and apparently intoxicated. They had found her on the bedroom floor under a blanket. She refused to get up and, when she finally did, it was evident that she was heavily under the influence. She was charged with disorderly conduct, criminal mischief, and three counts of, you guessed it, violation of a protective order. Released the following day on a $25,000 bond, Sitch, perhaps not getting the hint, went right back to Darling's residence. Once again, police were called and she was taken to jail, where she was charged with third-degree burglary and violation of a protective order. Sitch had claimed that she wasn't aware that she was violating the protective order and just went back to Darling's place to get her clothes and phone, but she had climbed up a balcony to do it and went inside without permission. She was held on a $100,000 bond this time and afterwards said that she was going to enter into a three-month rehab program, thanking WWE for, once again, footing the bill. Amazingly, on December 4th, Sitch, through her lawyer since she was in rehab, asked a judge to modify the protective order that Damien Darling had against her, saying that she needed to interact with him so they could work out their problems problems together and move forward. Not surprisingly, her request was denied. More surprising was the news in early January that Sitch and Darling were engaged to be married. Less surprising, Sonny getting arrested again, just weeks after news of the engagement made its way online. Police were called to Damien Darling's house on January 25th after an argument between the two apparently got wildly out of hand. Darling informed police that she had violated the court order against him, while Sitch counterclaimed that Darling had assaulted her, resulting in two broken ribs. Three days later, Darling was told by police while he was down at the station voluntarily that Sitch had been examined and had x-rays of her ribs taken. She displayed no signs of injury and police were satisfied that no assault had taken place. He was not charged or investigated for any wrongdoing while Sitch was held on a $100,000 bond. Darling later revealed in an interview that he was frightened one of them would die during their last fight as Sitch attacked him with bottles, hammers, and other objects in the house. Following this latest arrest and some ill-advised comments Tammy had made about WWE's paid-for rehab, the company made the decision to discontinue paying for her treatment, the first time they had done that for a current or former talent since the implementation of the wellness policy. Sitch was eventually released from prison after serving 114 days, but her behavior continued to be erratic, posting fake stories about stuff like being mugged or adopting a baby from Cambodia, though things were quiet from an arrest standpoint, at least for a couple of years.
In the summer of 2015, Sitch was charged with two counts of driving under the influence and two summary violations stemming from an incident that took place on May 30th in Palmerton, Pennsylvania. Police had stopped her in a Walmart parking lot at 1.30am and she failed a field sobriety test with a blood alcohol content of 0.253, over three times the legal limit and considered a very dangerous level. Sitch had also been driving with a suspended license. She was stopped a few days later and then again on June 20th after getting into a car crash. Causing more issues for herself, Sitch failed to show up for three scheduled hearings and a bench warrant was issued for her arrest. Her arrest went down on September 23rd and she was released on a $2,000 bond on the condition that she abstained from all drugs and alcohol ahead of her court date. Before being sentenced, Tammy was in the news for the release of her adult video Sunny Side Up In Through the Back Door, for which she reportedly received a six-figure sum from Vivid Entertainment and for also checking into rehab for 90 days, which WWE paid for after years of freezing her out. The time in rehab actually counted towards time served, so that when she was eventually sentenced for the DUIs that happened over a year earlier, she didn't actually have to go to jail. She did receive five years probation, was ordered to do 125 hours of community service work, and slapped with a $2,100 fine. During her probation, she would be subject to bi-weekly alcohol testing. Sitch was also warned that this was a zero-tolerance case and that one slip-up would land her back in jail. Barely weeks went by before Tammy was found unconscious and rushed to hospital. After being released from hospital, she was taken to prison for violating her parole since the incident had been caused due to her drinking. She pleaded guilty on January 12, 2017 to charges relating to driving without a license, driving an unregistered vehicle, operating a vehicle without proper insurance, and several other charges. She was held in custody, charged $1,500, and had her license suspended for 30 months. She got out of jail, where she had been held since September, on February 3rd, on condition that she attend rehab, sponsored once again by WWE. Her saga continued in early 2018, when she was arrested while a fugitive from justice after getting two further DUIs, one of which included another auto accident. While being held in New Jersey for those, police discovered there were existing warrants out for her arrest from Pennsylvania. She was extradited to Pennsylvania and remained in jail until October, when she was paroled. In early 2019, it was more of the same for Sitch, who was arrested and charged with further DUIs. She had failed to stop at a stop stoplight, was caught driving the wrong way down a one-way street, and had open containers of alcohol in her car. Worse news still, when police did a check on her, they found out she had other outstanding warrants for parole violations, failing to show up to hearings and missing drug tests, and had fallen behind on her court cost payments. Sunny spent a year in prison and was let out on parole in early March of 2020, but was back in trouble once again come July. This time, she was charged with driving with a suspended license, eluding a police officer, and contempt or violation of a domestic violence restraining order. She was released on June 9th, 2021, after serving almost a year behind bars. Since the turn of the year 2022, Tamara Lynn Sitch has found herself in three known incidents with the law. On January 13th, 2022, Tammy was arrested in Keensburg, New Jersey. She was charged with two counts of possessing a weapon and one charge of making terroristic threats. According to the arresting officer, he showed up as she was holding a pair of scissors and threatening to kill her boyfriend, a younger bodybuilder type named James Jones who had grown up as a fan of Sonny. The officer added that Sitch appeared to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. She was released from prison and professed her innocence via Facebook, but if convicted and found guilty, Tammy could be sentenced to a maximum of 11 years in prison. She was arrested again a month later in Keensburg and charged with 11 separate driving offences. And then on March 25th, 2022, Tammy's bad decision-making ended up having tragic consequences. Tammy Sitch was involved in a fatal three-car crash. At 8.28pm that Friday, Sunny failed to stop while driving southbound on Florida's US-1 highway, hitting a vehicle that had stopped, which in turn hit the vehicle in front of it. 
The driver of the vehicle hit by Sitch, identified as 75-year-old Daytona Beach Shores resident Julian LaFrancis Lassetta, was transported to a local medical facility where he was pronounced dead. Sitch was transported to the same medical facility and treated for injuries, but later released. However, law enforcement officers collected a blood sample from her after obtaining a search warrant as they believed that she was impaired at the time of the accident. The driver and passengers in the third vehicle also suffered injuries but did not require medical attention. If those toxicology reports do show that Tammy was under the influence at the time of the crash, things could be very, very bad for her as criminal charges will no doubt be filed and given Sitch's history and arrest record, she could end up facing a long time behind bars. It has been quite the long and depressing ride seeing what has happened to Sunny, the crush of millions of impressionables, from the health issues to the near countless number of arrests in recent years. It now seems clearer than ever that Tamara Lynn Sitch, a woman who has been given countless chances by so many, needs to be kept under supervision not just for her own protection, but for the protection of others too.